back here at the National Firearms Museum for another installment of the Curator's Corner. We're here in the Ruger Gallery. I'm here with Phil Schreier. He's a senior curator of the Firearms Museum. And Phil, Hollywood Guns is a great special display here in the Ruger Gallery. Uh, you said 105 firearms, memorabilia, the costumes, posters. It's, it's awesome. And, and you're looking at firearms from films both old and new and, and contemporary firearms and some not so contemporary farms in new films. So it's, it's, it's really neat. And, and today, Phil, that is quite a farm. I have to admit, I don't know what in the world it is, so please tell us. Oh, it's, it's heavy. Uh, <laughs> it looks heavy, that. man. It's a, a knock volley gun. There's seven barrels. Right. All, all tied together here. Right. And only one source okay. of ignition. I, so I, I give up. <laughs> well. What's the trick? The trick is, uh, <laughs> When you pull the trigger, all seven go off at once. That's oh. why it's called a volley gun. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> and look at the diameter of the bore on those. Those are yeah. all in. It's like firing seven rifles at oh. one time. Uh, so uh, what, basically what these were made for was the Royal Navy. Uh, knock. To oh, sink a ship? It, well, <laughs> <laughs> it depends on where you placed it against the, uh, the bulwark there. Uh, the, uh, the gun was designed uh, by uh, a London gunsmith that made these for the Royal Navy. And basically they were to, uh, uh, they were one shot wonders. Okay. Uh, you, you gave it one shot, you, you cleared a deck with it, you repelled borders wow. with it. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really neat uh, gun. It, it's gonna kill on one end and maim on the other when it goes <laughs> off. Say. That's I, Jim Speaker, uh, our director, gave us that geez, line. Geez, uh, yeah, and a good big brass plate, that's gonna, that'll probably dislocate your shoulder when that thing goes yeah. off. The neat thing Whew. about it is this was, uh, people were saying, what are, you, what are you doing with that in Hollywood guns? Well, uh, <laughs> uh, it was, uh, this is a real antique, one of those few instances where you have a real antique, in this case, a gun that was, uh, that was well over 100 years old, almost 150 years old, uh, when the film uh, The Alamo was made in 1960 with oh, John yeah. Wayne. A classic. If you remember, Richard Widmark played Jim Bowie yes. and uses this to great effect uh, in one of the last scenes in the film. Uh, not volley guns uh, have appeared in uh, Sean Bean's character, uh, Sharp's Rifles, a great BBC okay. uh, British television uh, uh, mini series about the uh, the 95th rifles in the during the Peninsula campaign of the Napoleonic Wars. One of his sergeants carries a knock volley gun with him, and uh, wow, they were also in uh, Russell Crowe's uh, classic uh, Master and Commander. Right, just saw you, that movie. You see yeah, a great couple movie. of these uh, making an appearance oh. there, but this is the original. Wow. This is Richard Widmark's. This is what was used oh. in John Wayne's 1960, the Alamo. That is so. It's kind of like a shotgun on steroids, sort of. It is. It, it's an amazing gun. I've never fired one. Never want to. <laughs> I was gonna say. I don't know. I, I, I'm up for just about anything. That thing has got to have a kick to it. Well, my, not only that, my. but if you want to reload, you've got to reload all seven barrels. I was gonna say. Can you hold off for a second while I reload? Well, it meant to just to just keep just keep the uh, the logistics of it. You've yeah. got seven barrels. You're loading them, and the battle's going on. You go. Yeah. But did I already put a round down? You know, the, <laughs> I wonder. You know, oh no! What did I do? What's down in that chamber? No. Did I miss this one? And skip, you know, you have a bunch of post-it notes on the uh, the muzzles so to uh, keep track. I, I, of and after a while, that. if you're carrying it around, depending on where you're using it, obviously they were deployed you know, from the Royal Navy on a lot of different places. Though, I mean, it could get a little tiring carrying that around for oh. a couple of hours or for a day and a half. You can tell, especially in Sharps rifles, that the one they're using is made out of rubber because <laughs> that sergeant just He's just throwing it around, around yeah. everywhere with it, and, <laughs> and this weighs a good 15 pounds. Uh, so that that's that's oh, not man. the way that happens. That is a impressive, and, and I'll tell you what, Phil, it's it's another one of the, there's such a great range. What I've struck by is the range of firearms from the conventional, we've seen conventional and, and classic firearms, but the way they're used, the way they're dressed, the way they're utilized in films, it, it's it's pretty amazing. And as you mentioned before, well, some of the firearms, not this one, of course, being antique, some of the firearms, you know, may have appeared in two or three different films and in, in, in as props in, in television films and it's it's an amazing connection between between uh, firearms and motion pictures it really is really it's a lot of fun uh, and you know we've always said 
the reason for the popularity of, of this exhibit and the one that preceded it on the same subject is that no matter how you personally feel about guns, most everybody loves movies. Yeah. And uh, they, they may not uh, you know, enjoy the hobby or go out and, and participate, but they, uh, they love watching Schwarzenegger's The Terminator right. or John Wayne. You know. If you don't like John Wayne, you're gonna like the album. If you don't like the album, you, you're gonna like No Country for Old yeah. Men. I mean, come on, there's gotta be something in here that gets, there's a lightsaber for crying out loud. Who doesn't like that? And for us gun guys, you know, Ugh. I would think that if, if you were able to seriously sit down and take a, a poll or you know, get into their heads, you'll find out that our desires and interests in, in, in using guns came from watching television and movies oh, as a kid. How much? It of was course. wanting to go out and play cowboys we and wanna, Indians in the backyard. We want to play Army. That was it. Yeah. Army. Yeah. It was a, That was the game. It was a, one uh, Army. Whatever you could use as a firearm, a stick or whatever, would, would suffice. Yeah, for me, it was watching Rat Patrol and Tom. Oh. The you best, know, that was, that was the good. best. So tell us how we can come and see that beautiful antique and, and the others here at the Hollywood Guns Collection. Well, this original knock volley gun is on display at Hollywood Guns at the William B. Ruger Gallery of the National Firearms Museum. The museum is open seven days a week, free of charge from 9.30 to 5 p.m. There's plenty of parking. We're located just outside the city of Washington, D.C. in Fairfax, Virginia, off of Route 66. You can visit us 24 hours a day online at nramuseum.com. And, and I know why you're excited, because we just announced this. We were talking about this earlier. We have a brand new feature at nramuseum.com called On the Road, where we followed, we took some cameras, some mics, and went out with you and, and Jim Sapika, the director here, and went to the Wanamaker Tulsa Arms Show, and you guys went out there and talked all day long to folks about their farms, antiques like this, no rubber guns, but everything else in between. And we put it together and, and put a program together called On the Road, NFM On the Road. And we're very excited to be rolling that on, out on your website now. So when you go to the National Farms Museum site, check that out as well. Can't wait to see it myself. Phil, thank you very much for an, another beautiful farm here on the Curator's Corner. John, thanks again for having us on the show.